Los Angeles, California is the capital of the filmmaking industry. But why? How did this West Coast city become the go-to location for making movies? And why are so many movies still made there? Basically, how did Hollywood become Hollywood? We'll dive into all of those questions in this video. In the early days of film production, places like New York, New Jersey, and Chicago were the primary centers for making movies. It was on the East Coast where the technology for moving pictures had been developed, and Thomas Edison, yes, that Thomas Edison, owned the patents for most of that technology. He apparently was pretty ruthless when it came to protecting what was his, and was quick to take people to court over any unauthorized use of his filmmaking technology. Aside from run-ins with Edison, costs for filmmaking began to grow with the rise of unionized labor. The unpredictable and often chilly weather of the Northeast also added to the difficulties of production. So as the demand for films began to grow in the early 1900s, between Thomas Edison, the rising costs of making a film, and the unpredictable weather, filmmakers began searching for more friendly production locations. It was quickly realized that places like Florida and Louisiana weren't suitable for making films due to the frequent tropical storms and the humidity, which often ruined expensive equipment. Reports of better weather out west quickly began to draw filmmakers away from the east coast. There's actually a pretty funny story about the legendary filmmaker Cecil B. DeMille and his role in bringing movies to the west coast. He and his film crew, after boarding a train in New York, headed west to shoot The Squaw Man, which was later proclaimed to be the first full-length feature film shot in Los Angeles. Their original plan was actually to film in Flagstaff, Arizona. However, when they arrived, they quickly changed their minds. When we got off the train in Flagstaff, it was colder than when I left New York, DeMille later said. We looked around and said, this doesn't look like the type of country the Squaw Man was laid in. So we got back on the train and came out to California. Can you imagine how different things might be today if they had stayed in Flagstaff? If the weather had been just a little bit better that day, Hollywood could totally be in Arizona right now. Like, how crazy is that? Well, by 1909, news had spread far and wide of the year-round sunny weather in Southern California, and filmmakers quickly discovered numerous other reasons why Southern California was the perfect place for filmmaking. Not only was there great weather all year round, but labor was cheap. The unions that had led to cost increases on the East Coast didn't yet exist in California. Cheap labor was readily available, and the film business had no trouble exploiting the laborers. Reportedly, in the early days of filmmaking in California, skilled laborers were paid about 50% less than they would have been paid on the East Coast. Another thing that made Southern California a great place to film was the variety of geographical landscapes. Whether you needed to film in the mountains, in the desert, or at sea, California had it all, and property was cheap. Filmmakers were able to buy large plots of land in order to create any movie set imaginable. In 1911, the first actual studio moved into Hollywood, an area in the foothills west of Los Angeles. Over time, as the film industry grew in Southern California, the name Hollywood became synonymous with movies and filmmaking. The cheap labor which initially drew filmmakers to California wasn't to last, though. As the film industry continued to expand in Southern California, the need to protect industry employees grew. By the 1920s and 30s, laborers, actors, and other film professionals had started unionizing. Important guilds like the Screen Actors Guild and the Screen Writers Guild began to take shape. In 1927, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences was established as a union to represent members in labor grievances. That same academy is better known today for the awards they give out every year. You might have heard of them. One of the major establishments of the labor unions was the Studio Zone, also known as the 30 Mile Zone, or TMZ. And yes, this is where the gossip site gets its name. The 30 Mile Zone is an area defined by a 30 mile radius around the center of Hollywood. Within its boundaries, on-set laborers, particularly extras and other craftspeople, are expected to transport themselves. The zone also determines pay scales and other working conditions. When workers are required to show up for work outside of the zone, studios then become responsible for transportation, meals, and other compensation. So as production continued to ramp up in the Los Angeles area, shooting in the zone meant saving on cost. This is why so many studios are all clustered in such a small area. It also led to the purchase and development of numerous studio ranches, which were typically purchased on the periphery of the studio zone for shooting westerns or movies that needed similar rustic backdrops. Although it informally existed as early as 1917, the studio zone was formally established in 1934. At the time, it was a six-mile zone centered on the intersection of Rossmore and Fifth. 
In 1970, the zone was increased to a 30-mile radius, and it now centers on the intersection of La Cienega and Beverly Boulevards, which is the former location of the Association of Motion Picture and Television Producers. In more recent years, other countries and locations in the United States have offered generous tax credits or deductions to offset the higher cost of filming outside of the studio zone. This has led to more productions happening outside of Hollywood, which is also referred to as runaway production. Cities like New Orleans, Atlanta, and Vancouver are prime examples of this and have become popular and cheaper alternatives to filming in Los Angeles. However, it's definitely still safe to say that the continued financial incentives that the Studio Zone offers and the multitude of industry experts in the area still make Hollywood the center of the film industry. So when we say Hollywood, are we always just talking about this Studio Zone? Not always. Some people have said that the true Hollywood is a little harder to nail down, and director John Ford famously said, Hollywood is a place you can't geographically define. We don't really know where it is. On one hand, there's the Studio Zone, which is clearly defined. But then there's the more abstract Hollywood, that magical place we go to follow our dreams of being in the movie business. This second definition isn't so much a geographical location as much as it's a concept lived out through the art of filmmaking. Anthropologist Hortense Powdermaker, in her book Hollywood the Dream Factory, concluded that Hollywood itself is not an exact geographical area, although there is such a postal district. It has commonly been described as a state of mind, and it exists wherever people connected with the movies live and work. So yes, Southern California, for multiple reasons, is home to the heart of the filmmaking industry, and will probably continue to be, at least for the foreseeable future. But the true essence of Hollywood will always exist wherever movies are being made. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.